This is uh, Lily Cohen and uh, Beta, what number is it? Uh, 24, I can't quite see. 26. So if you could actually start by walking through, this is um, close to production unit. If you can start by walking through what's new about this spot mini. You know, we've, we've redesigned many of the components to make it more reliable, uh, to make the skins work better, and to protect it if it uh, does fall. This robot has, uh, I'm going to go out there and point at a few things. This has cameras. It has two sets on the front uh, and one on each side and one on the back. So it can see in all directions. I, I got to say, too, it looks a little more banged up, I think, than I've seen a lot of your robots. It looks like it's kind of been through the ringer a we, bit. I mean, we've been testing these things relentlessly. As I say, they usually go through many hours of, of testing a week. They do fall still. This is also designed, you, these are like roof racks so that when you build your special platform, like maybe the previous speakers will make a, uh, a deck that you can take a drone off from, and they'll just attach that. There's connections for, um, for an Ethernet so that they can communicate, and then we have our IP API. This also has a special radio on it. It has built-in Wi-Fi, but for an event like this where you all have your phones out and you're texting and stuff, Wi-Fi can be uh, unreliable, so we're using a, a spread spectrum uh, radio, and of course it's got the arm. Why don't we show off the arm? One of the great things about a mobile robot like this with an arm is that the workspace is essentially infinite and the motion of the base contributes to the motion of the arm. If you have a fixed arm, they're usually very limited to what they can do. And of course we've coordinated the arm with the body, so Lily is actually just driving the hand. I know you think it's a head, but it's really a hand. <laughs> and she can drive it fore and aft and sideways, and now she's put it into a mode where the hand is stabilized in space. We love to call it, I love to call this chicken head mode. And really, people have the capability of stabilizing their manipulators and their heads while the rest of it moves, and it really facilitates the ability to handle objects and work in the world as the robot travels around in the world. Can, can you talk a little bit about the control mechanism? Um, so this has onboard computers that are interpreting the data from the vision. They also interpret data from the, the load cells in the, uh, in the link, so it can feel the environment. It's balancing itself. I won't kick it. We're not allowed to do that anymore. But I'll show that it's stable. And if I push on it, if I push hard enough, it'll step. And uh, it, you know, it's pretty robust. If it does fall over, it can get back up. Um, so there's the low-level stabilization of the robot. And then it has... Um, vision that it can use to negotiate obstacles, like this block. And uh, here, Lily, I want you to run me down with the robot. It won't do it, huh? I wouldn't promise that it's never going to run into anybody, but uh, it's using its vision uh, to treat me as an obstacle, and then even though Lily's just saying go straight ahead, it goes around. And later on, we're, I think after the show closes, we're going to demo this out front, and you can drive it, and uh, see, you, know, you can see if you can run one of us down with it if you want. Um, and then on top of that, we have navigation software that can autonomously navigate around space, and eventually you guys will all be writing apps that run in, uh, and interact with uh, the controls on the robot. So what, what's, the, what's the purpose, then, of having it manually controlled? Because it, it seems like the vast majority of the time it's going to be moving around autonomously. I, th I don't know. There's many people who have applications. So there's the police application, where they really want to drive it, although, again, the autonomy is always running at a low level. Uh, we have people who want to do gas and oil applications, where you're out in an oil rig or something like that, and they're happy to have a person in the loop. They just don't want to have the person out on the uh, oil rig and uh, we, other energy applications where uh, it doesn't really need to be completely autonomous in the fact that there's no one there. And then we have lots of applications where autonomy is the thing. And I think the kinds of paradigms used, I hope, will unfold as we get uh, the world building on top of uh, this. We want it to be like the Android uh, of, uh, of robots where people are developing their own apps. And the Android of Androids? The Android of Androids, yeah. Uh, 